Okay, since uh, Mr. Whoopi was here uh, and he helped me get the motor started, he left me with some homework. So that homework is uh, fix the flex plate on the back of this motor. Uh, another thing I need to do is I need to change that plug right there on my intake manifold, uh, change it to an internal wrenching plug so my uh, distributor can spin and not hit this plug right here so that's a problem uh, beyond that um, these stainless steel 12 point bolts that i have uh, holding my intake manifold down i just installed these dry and i kind of find out later that uh, on the stainless when you're using those it's better to add a little bit of anti-seize onto those bolts so i'll be taking each one of those out and putting a little anti-seize putting them back in to torque them down uh, beyond that i got a few things to address on the serpentine system and then I can kind of start this up. So just to show you what I picked up, I want to show you my flex plate. I removed the flex plate and as you can see, it is not flat. So I took this one out. I went over to Summit Racing and I ordered up a new uh, flex plate. This is 162 tooth uh, flex plate, so we'll be installing that tonight. I did get the new bolts uh, to put this in. I didn't want to run the old crusty old ones. I'm sure these are fine. Actually, I'm sure they're not fine. So we need to put new stuff on the back of this motor. Uh, I also picked up a set of pipe threaded taps. So I got five different sizes here. The reason why I picked this up is this 3 8 port on this intake manifold the powder coating kind of got into those threads and it is really tough to try to you know uh, get a plug in here so i need to clear those threads so i can actually put a proper plug on that thing i picked up these plugs they're internal wrenching they are stainless and i'll be using these now i also picked up the same style internal wrenching plug uh half inch um for to replace these so half inch right here this is a 3 8 uh, pipe threaded plug and just to clear out those threads i picked up this set right here so it has all sizes this was an amazon purchase this was an amazon purchase this was summit racing summit and of course this is hamburger lasagna okay so yesterday i got the new flex plate installed Let's see the new flex plate down here installed um, the ARP bolts come with some thread locker instruction. Um, you put some Loctite on the threads and then they provide another lubricant that goes around uh, the head of the bolt. So uh, I looked up the torque spec in my Chevy manual. Torque spec for the flex plate is 60 foot pounds. However, the ARP bolts uh, came with the torque spec of 75 foot pounds. So I put the torque, I, I torqued it down to 75, going in increments of 20, 40, 60, 75 in a star like pattern. So flex plate is done. This box showed up in my mail today. And what's inside is a lot of stuff. So what we have here is the front runner kit from Vintage Air. Okay, so let's get this piece out right here. Oh, oh, some power wires, I like that. Polished cover for the air conditioning compressor. Here's some more brackets. This kind of looks like the brackets for the uh, power steering pump. I know for sure this is one of the brackets for the uh, serpentine tensioner pulley. So here's the belt right here. Now I know this is the water pump pulley and how I know that is because it's smooth. It does not have the grooves right here. Okay, next is the, that's the pulley. This is a 170 amp alternator, fully chromed. Fully chromed. You know what this looks like? This looks like the power steering pulley. That's my air conditioning compressor right here. Let's pull it out, ready? Oh man, fully chrome. I have no idea what's in this box. It's the water pump. How do you know that? 
Where's the Oh yeah. <laughs> Over at the water pump. Okay, they gave us a water pump. Okay. They gave us some gaskets. This is, I think, the water pump. Damn. Oh, no, that's the crank pulley. Oh, yeah, you're right, it is. Damn, how do you know that? It's in the box. Oh, shit. <laughs> Damn. Okay, this is the uh, <laughs> crank pulley, and the only reason why I didn't know that is because I didn't read. <laughs> <laughs> Power steering pump, and this is from what I believe to be Detroit Speed. Okay. Man, look at that. Look at that. Uh, now we're moving on to the serpentine system and getting that done. So right here, I've got a new Stewart water pump. This is a high flow water pump. It is a reverse rotation water pump. And today I'm gonna be painting this thing body color, uh, pearl green, the key lime pearl green. Uh, it's already masked off. You see, I took a lot of time masking off all the threads, holes, uh, this back plate, and uh, we're gonna just go ahead and paint this up. Okay, so I got the Stewart water pump primered, painted, and clear coated. It's looking pretty good. You could see where I masked off certain areas where I really can't fill in with paint because of the spacer that goes in there. Okay, here's where we're at. I got the uh, big block front serpentine system off the uh, 454. So now I'm just cleaning up where the uh, water pump used to sit, getting that cleaned up. This is now ready to put the new slurpentine system on. This is the new slurpentine system. This is manufactured and sold by Vintage Air. It's their kit. They call it a front runner kit. But since this engine is Mr. Thirsty and this truck is called Mr. Thirsty, this is the slurpentine system. Right here we have the air conditioning compressor fully chromed. This is gonna be the front cover that blocks this off so you won't see this black. So this will look real pretty. Um, this right here is the 170 amp chrome alternator. And man, I gotta tell you, this thing is looking sharp. Right here we have the crank pulley. This is like show chrome. This is just beautiful. Right here, we have the Detroit Speed power steering pump. It comes with this pulley right here. I need to press this on with a tool, but we'll be looking something like this when we're done with that. Uh, I also picked up this added piece right here. Okay, so right here, this kit also came with a Stewart water pump, which obviously I painted green. I couldn't help myself. It comes with this beautiful chrome pulley, which very impressive. I bought this guy right here. This is gonna be for my firewall so I can route all my lines in the engine bay and route all my lines inside my cab. And then right here, these are all the brackets and the serpentine belt that came with this kit. So this is what they call the main truss system. This is gonna sit like above the water pump right here and it's got spacers. This is the bracket. Um, you have some of these water line fittings uh, for the water pump. Uh, this right here is for the tensioner pulley. This right here is for my power steering pump. And then here's all the bolts and hardware to put this all together. I'm going to start installing all these pieces and get the front slurpentine system installed for Mr. Thirsty. I've installed the Stewart water pump. I've installed the uh, hose fittings and also this hose fitting as well. Um, before this Stewart water pump goes on, there's these studs that go into the block. Uh, these studs are a little bit longer than this side, so just read the instructions that goes on. Once this is, once the studs are in and the water pump is slid on, there's two gaskets that the kit comes with. I used a little bit of uh, RTV silicone, like a gasket maker, and I put a very thin layer of RTV on both sides of that gasket. Then I installed the front runner, just snugged up these bolts, just to keep some pressure on this while the RTV dried. I need to install this hose right here. And as you can see, uh, man, that's a tight fit. Easiest way to get it on is just use a little bit of soapy water, spray it inside. That way you have, it'll be a little slick and it'll slide on a little bit easier. So 
I got the top on, I got the bottom on right there. Now I had to pre-fit this hose onto here so I can get it cut just right to fit on here. So it was just the right length. Next step, we are gonna put on the main truss bracket. I've already bolted on the chrome air conditioning compressor and the chrome 170 amp alternator. No spacers used here. There's a small spacer down here and there's two longer spacers up here. This needs to go on next. This bracket right here is for the power steering pump and it's this corner bolt right here that's gonna go on. Later, I gotta put some spacers and bolts here, but for right now, we're just gonna set that on. This truss is gonna slide over the four studs. One there, two there, and a fourth in there. Okay. And then this bolt goes into one of these holes right there. Okay. There it is, right there. That's the main truss. Now, these bolts were longer because this bracket needs to go on. This bracket is for the tensioner pulley. So it uses these two holes to go onto these two studs and the tensioner pulley will mount to this area right here. They come with these 12 point nuts right here. The next step, the next thing that I'm gonna do is put on the crankshaft pulley. In the instructions here, it's telling us that we uh, have a hex bolt. Uh, it also has, uh, has a hat washer. And then there's also uh, three more one inch 12 point stainless steel bolts. So here's the three stainless steel bolts that we're gonna be using. And this is the uh, hex bolt and the hat washer. So I'm gonna remove that and uh, replace it. Here's a crankshaft pulley, looking good. There's this hat washer, kind of fits down into that groove right here. Just kind of run this down. There we go. Okay. Good thing we had a little bit of back pressure in each one of the cylinders. I've got all the spark plugs in. So now the lower crankshaft pulley is fully installed. The next thing I want to install is the water pump pulley right here. Four three quarter inch 12 point bolts. Torque to 22 foot pounds. All right, so let's do that. There's a stamp part number right here. There's no stamp on this side, and that stamp is supposed to go towards the water pump. And as I'm looking down at it, that's lining up real nice. Off camera, I installed this power steering pump pulley onto the Detroit power steering pump. The instructions are pretty specific. They really want you to use a particular tool for installing pulley onto the power steering pump. I basically just went down to my local Harbor Freight and I picked up this Pittsburgh pulley removal set. This thing cost me $19 plus tax. It's this kit right here. I just use a combination of this piece, this one right here, uh, these bearings, this washer, this part, and that was it. And I was able to uh, press on this pulley. The next thing I need to do is I bought this part right here. This is an accessory. It does not come with the kit. What this does is it routes, I believe this is a high pressure side. It routes this line from this port right here around the back. And it gives you, instead of trying to put something in here, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this out, we're gonna open this up, and this line, it just routes the line back here and around, so it makes it for an easier connection when this motor goes in the engine and you need to connect up your uh, your lines to your either your steering box, in my case, would be a rack and pinion. This makes it just tight, real clean, and it just routes this line behind the power steering pump. 
here's the piece right here. I just pulled out of the packaging. It looks like we've got two of these copper crush washers. So I'm going to say one of them is going to be in the top and one of them be in the bottom, right? This piece is supposed to, we're going to do it with this just on loosely. Bam, bam, bam. Okay, I'm just going to just start this right quick. Okay, so we have here is we have this line right here. It just routes this line behind the power steering pump and it just points it right down, right? So right here, you got your high pressure line that will end up being right here. And you have your low pressure line that's right here. Okay, the next thing I need to do is I need to torque down both of the power steering bolts to 28 uh, foot pounds. So we're gonna do that right now. Beautiful. Okay, so we're back on uh, Mr. Thirsty here. I uh, was able to get everything bolted down and torqued up. Um, this pulley was torqued down, I think 23 foot pounds. Um, after that was done, uh, I put the serpentine belt on. This is a six rib serpentine belt. And let me tell you, it was pretty difficult getting it on. I actually put the belt on, moved the tensioner pulley and had to slip it underneath the water pump pulley. And how I was able to get it on, this is a brand new belt, so it's it's tight. I know it's gonna relax a little bit. So what I had to do is actually spin the motor with the uh, bolt that goes into the uh, crank. I spun that. When I spun that, I was able to push this belt on and let it spin and just kind of ride and finally get onto this pulley. So after doing that, I had noticed that this belt was riding like on top of uh, this tensioner pulley, it was actually touching it. You can see I got some play now. I was actually touching it. But what I realized is as this got on, some of this belt was kind of on this lip and this alternator, it wasn't quite seated. All the ribs weren't seated in all the six grooves. So once I just kept rotating the motor and manipulated the belt to get into place, I actually have a little bit of room. Man, it's tight clearances, but I can definitely see when this belt gets used, it warms up or relaxes a little bit. I can definitely see uh, a little bit more clearance happening right here. So all in all, that's good. Okay, now I'm ready to, um, I wanna start this motor and I wanna bring it up to temp, okay? So what I've done here is on my power steering pump, I've uh, just kind of done a bypass right here. You know, seen in my previous clip where I have this tight fitting line that comes back through here. I've gone ahead and just added a bypass through here and I filled it up with a little bit of power steering uh, fluid. So far, not leaking and it's looking good. Over on this side, I've gone ahead and I put the lower radiator hose and that's installed to the water pump. And the water pump has a nipple coming out of here. It's to go to my heater core and this guy right here, I've uh, just got some extra hose, some scrap hose that I had and I plugged it up and put a uh, hose clamp. So the next thing I'm ready to do is actually put on the radiator. Nice, nice. So look, I'm gonna shut the camera off. I'm gonna go ahead and get this all wired up, get the battery in it, get the hoses, get this thing filled up with water, get some fuel in my tank, put the hose in my fuel tank and uh, get it all wired up and I'll cut you back in as soon as that's done. Okay, so I got uh, everything plumbed up. I got my water, I got my fuel, I got my accessories, my battery. Uh, let's see, so everything's good to go. So we're gonna give this another start. Now remember, I did change out the uh, flex plate the last time this started, the flex plate was warped, so I got a new one, put that on. And uh, now we're just gonna start this motor with the new front runner kit, which I'm calling the Slurpentine system. So we're gonna start this thing up and see if this works. Okay, ignition, coil, gauges, fuel. Start this thing up. Yeah. Uh -huh. 
pressure engages. I got a water leak right here on my thermostat housing, so let's go ahead and fix that. All right, I want to get this up to temperature. I just got a small, small leak right here. I'm just going to wrap this up to catch the fluid a little bit. It's a tiny, tiny leak, but I'm trying to get this up to temperature, and I really want to check for leaks. So uh, let's go ahead and start again. Let it burn, let it burn. Fix that it's smoking pretty good on this damn wire kind of seems like I'm just burning off whatever's on these headers so kind of seems like let's try this again Got the engine clearly headers are breaking in right we got some smoke coming through this exhaust so no worries nothing's leaking except for my thermostat housing right here which uh, i can address that's not a big problem uh, i had oil pressure the whole time uh, my temperature never came up so either my uh, temperature sending unit's wrong or this cable's wrong anyhow something's wrong we'll fix that so far everything's good the flex plate in the back it's working fine there's no issues uh, of course it's new so it shouldn't have any issues and uh, this side is looking good you can see where my sanderson headers are starting to turn purple just from the heat coming out and we're going to have those uh we're going to have those coated ceramic coated but it's looking pretty good sorry for the poor lighting but it's just kind of late at night so we'll just look on this side Stop you guys. Stop. 